good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are on our amazing planet, I'm Ariel. And I am Shia. Welcome. Welcome to being here. Uh, you know what? I, pa- I had this thought. What was your thought? It went through. Uh, when I said, I'm Ariel, where I paused. Yes. Uh, we, not too long ago, went to a doctor's appointment for Shia, and the gal was like, I'm Marion. And we said, what could you say your name again? Marion. And we finally, we got her name was Mary Ellen. And when I said, I'm Ariel, she said, oh, people often think I'm Ariel. And uh, I hate my name. And uh, that just flashed through. So when she called to give Shia some really good uh, news, news, I said, oh, Mary Ellen, that's our favorite name of the day. Because <clears throat> she gave us good news uh, that Shia had no bacteria and he was doing great. And uh, she said, really? She was so shocked that someone would like her name. She'd totally forgotten yeah, the whole well, conversation. Well, look, had. look. People are lost in the conversation they're having with themselves 100% of the time. I wouldn't say 99. 99.8, how's that? <laughs> That's close enough to 100% of the time. You know, and if you're lost in a conversation you're having with yourself, you're not available to your life as it's showing up. You get serious. You get driven to get and achieve goals that you think will produce what you're looking for in the way of satisfaction, well-being, happiness. And and the achievement of a goal does not in and of itself produce satisfaction or happiness. But if you are satisfied and you are engaged in what you're doing like it's your choice, then satisfaction resides in you. You know, that this particular episode is skipping the whole Megillah, which Megillah is a Yiddish slang for a tedious, long and complicated story. And uh, if we imagine that Mary Ellen is not unusual, that she has resisted her name for years, has drugged that story with her. And then every time she says it and people multiple times a day, according to her, ask her to say her name again because they don't get it or they mispronounce it. She actually keeps that story in the foreground of her life. She is representative of all of us. We have pet stories about things we don't like or don't like about ourselves that we keep carrying around and bring into this moment. What can release you from that? Listening truly listening and listening is a skill set that you develop by listening if you truly listen using your ears and your eyes to connect with who's ever speaking it supports you in getting into the current moment because no two things can occupy you at the same time and if you're busy having a conversation with yourself while listening to somebody else you don't do well with either. That's so true. Mm-hmm. You know, I, was thinking, I just flashed it away and then came back while you're speaking. It's funny how sometimes when I'm working on a project and then we skip to another project. So I was working on a project today and here we are uh, recording the podcast. How that project in its in completion. In completion wants to intrude on this moment so you can get that complete, but you can't get that complete because it's incomplete right now. Correct. It's as, as complete as it can possibly be in this moment. And certainly as I let go of it, it seems to complete itself in the background. I don't have to keep spinning that plate in order for it to get done. Mm. Should we take our first guess? Yes, please. All right. Marty, this is your first time as our guest on being here. Um, welcome. and. Kindly tell people where you're zooming in from. Hi there. This is Marty. I'm calling in from West Nyack, New York, which is where I work. And I'm really excited to be here. It, it is my first time. And a um, little, uh, little talking to myself about making sure I could do it right, even though I know there's no way to do this right at all. So um, I just want to have some fun and listen. 
Well, I imagine that that whole conversation about doing it right, we just, it's almost like we pulled back the curtain and the movie called Marty is playing and the soundtrack that goes along is, Ooh, I better do this right. Well, it was, it was fascinating because as you and Shia were just speaking, um, I noticed how often I was going, okay, I've got to unmute, I've got to turn on my camera as opposed to just listening to you. And when it became time for me to come on to speak to you that I would just do what I needed to do. And I, it's, uh, and I'm, I, I'm positive I do that on almost every aspect of my life. That would make sense. If, if we take a look at it, our, you know, it's so much easier when you look at your life as if this moment is a microcosm of your life, as opposed to, oh, the circumstances are making me tongue tied or the circumstances are making me worried about doing it right rather than, oh, look, I'm approaching this this way. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I find that that's really true and um, incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful. When I was uh, thinking about coming on and we were talking about the whole Megillah, which I love because when I was a kid, they actually used to read the Megillah at Purim and I was like, I hope they don't read the whole thing. Um, but uh, it, it was uh, in terms of, rehashing if if i just when i stay present when i have the ability to stay present and listen and participate in the moment um i'm not telling that story to myself about how to do it right or how i didn't do it right or what's going to happen when we start to speak so yeah. uh, you can't do it wrong marty you know it's already over see this moment is all there really is and when you are listening in this moment, the whole Megillah does not exist anymore. When you're not listening, it becomes a reality. So it's like a light switch, either present in the moment of your life or your thinking, which takes you back to your past or off to your future. Your mm, imagined future your projected future, your ideas based in survival, based in worry about how it's going to turn out. So in those moments, you're not living your life. In those moments, your mind takes over. You're in the midst of an upset, worrying about the worst possible scenario. My cat is now in the midst of an upset. <laughs> She's having a fest downstairs. Uh well, well, I, uh, with respect to that, Shai, I found that um, as we do, as I participate in seminars, when we've been able to travel now since COVID in person, um, the story that I've been carrying for so long seems to move to the background more often than not. Uh, the trepidation that I've had about being successful, fulfilling some story I told myself that I wanted to live a long time ago, it's still there, but it's it's much more in the background. So I'm able to just enjoy and uh, be with what, whatever it is that I'm being. And well, it, here's the thing, Marty. You've been practicing being in the moment. You've been coming to seminars, which allows you it actually compels you to let go of the conversation you listen to in order to listen to what's happening in other people's lives. <clears throat> when you take your attention off yourself, your universe takes care of everything. When you think you need to manipulate things to get it to turn out the way you want, uh, the results are usually disastrous if you're normal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh where where to where to unpack all that it's um you know I, i've spoken to you guys recently about this but my life once i stopped talking to myself about my life and just started living my life it is amazing what the universe has provided uh at my work in particular where so much of my story about myself uh so much of my story was about my work life about my ambition about 
how to succeed, how I wasn't doing it well enough, how I wasn't growing fast enough, all that stuff, how I had to keep working and working and working until I made it. So, I mean, I, I have this story for decades and decades. Well, Marty, and, if, yeah? you, if you made it so, would it matter? No. Isn't there a new made it so after it, it, the last made it so? Okay, I got to reach oh. this level. And... Well, you know, oh. several years ago, probably more than 30, Ariel and I were in uh, Switzerland. We were, uh, we we had a small vacation from the meditation center in Italy and we went to St. Moritz. It was summertime and we went uh, and stayed in a condo there and there was this mountain behind our condo. So we decided to climb the mountain and we pushed and pulled and made it to the top only to discover that there was another mountain on top of that mountain that we couldn't see. And that really was a lesson, a life lesson in striving to get to where you think you need to get to. You always have another place to strive to afterwards and it's not fulfilling, even if you get there. And, and that's, you know, what I, what I, take from um, both of you and from being in our community is um, is exactly that. I just, I kind of, I let go of the story of, and, and um, something you've said to me often is you don't know what you don't know. And I'm really interested in getting to know what I don't know. I mean, it's just to be oh, out there and to know what you don't know. There'll still be more that you don't know. Exactly, but but how exciting is that, right? It's, it, as opposed to having a story of myself as somebody who kind of knows pretty much everything, you know. Like I got to everybody. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forget a lot too, but <laughs> well, but you still know everything that you know. But also, Marty, I I feel like that kind of I know everything. Uh, veneer was your early starting point. Like you knew everything. You just didn't want to disrupt. I know, I know that. I know that there. It, you are so much more secure in yourself now that, and it doesn't have to do with what you've produced. It has to do with relaxing into you and being okay where you are. And I imagine that your productivity has escalated now that you've let go of so much of the striving. And so much of the trying to do it right. Oh, I, so one of the first things that I noticed was that I stopped making lists. And and as we've discussed, I, every day I come in, there may be a couple things that I need to do that are top of mind. But then it's what comes, what's in front of me. So if somebody walks through my door to talk to me, I put down what I'm doing. I take care of what's in front of me. I come back and inevitably I, the uh, insights that I need come to me. And, I, and it, the days go easier. They go faster. I'm able to delegate more effectively because I don't, I'm not holding on to anything that I need to do. And uh, actually that last one just came to me, it, which is true. I just, I delegate much more easily now. That's great. You know, the other, other thing is, I believe it was after you came to camp to come to the, the last time, um, it occurred to you to start delegating more, that you wouldn't lose anything to delegate more. Like you, you had a pretty rigid system of timing and how much you needed to be at work. And I, I don't believe it occurred to you that that could be looked at and, and revised for another way. Yeah, I I just I I didn't know that that possibility was even there, and then it came up, and it was like I began to ask myself what I wanted to do as opposed to what I had to do, and uh, in the in the wanting, I I saw that I wasn't doing what I well, uh, that's not actually true, I. Uh, let me rephrase that. Of course, I was doing everything I wanted to do, but I didn't realize there was another possibility that I wanted more. And that's what came to me. 
Nice. 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 Uh, I learned something today from you. I I know that Megillah is Yiddish slang for a tedious, long, complicated story, but I didn't realize that Megillah was actually a story that was read at Purim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that That's my recollection of uh, not being a overly uh, practicing Jew. I, uh, I uh, but I, I believe that's it. And, um, you know, that's another part of the story that uh, we've talked about before, which is, you know, my Jewish background and how much I reject and how much I accept or have rejected and have accepted. Um, of, what? of your background? Yeah, yeah. About of of the that download that I received, you know, when I was growing up in the 60s and early 70s from going to temple, from going to Israel, from being part of a Jewish family, all that, all that, all the good stuff and all the stuff that came along with the good stuff. It's funny how you say that as though if you were to use the word bad, it would be bad. Yeah, yeah. It, that, thank you. Yes. I definitely left that out of that sentence purposefully. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's a whole new story. <laughs> oh, well, well, it was at, uh, I think it was before COVID, uh, when uh, we were down in um, Costa Rica and I stood up to explain to somebody about Orthodox Judaism or something. And what came out of my mouth was so amazing at all the prejudices against other Jewish people that I had, uh, I had acquired over the years. It was, it was amazingly eye-opening. You know, yeah. But I think we, we've gone back full circle. Remember, when we talked at the very beginning of this segment with you, Marty, about how we pulled back the screen of Marty's life and the movie's already playing and the conversation you're having with yourself is the conversation you have with yourself elsewhere. When you stood up and spoke back then, you simply said out loud the stuff that has been playing and playing and playing on the film script of Marty back then. And the, when you see something without judging, it completes itself in an instant. So what you resist persists, grows stronger, dominates your life, your experience of yourself, and it becomes really embedded in the story of your life. Second, you can only be exactly as you are in any given moment. Third, anything you see completes itself and uh i find it even amazing you remember what you said back when your mind is a, is an amazing thing i have a hard time you know holding on to stuff from uh, a long time ago but clearly you surprised yourself by your prejudices uh, well it, it was the first time i became really aware that they were playing in the background and as you said they came to the foreground and i was like wow look at that it's like look at this it's well like a new you're you're giving people the formula to have a great life because if you just discover the way you are without judging what you see then it completes itself when you find fault with yourself for having prejudices then you keep them in place because your prejudices were programmed in at a very, very early age, and maybe even before you were born. <clears throat> uh, recently, Ariel and I came up upon a study about mice, where uh, these scientists introduced the smell of cherry or cherry blossom. It might just have been cherry. I think it was cherry, you know, like the, the sweet... Cherry smell smells. of cherry, like from cough medicine and whatever. Sure. Mice. And then they shocked them with an electric shock. So they were being uh, tortured with in the smell of cherries, which is like a Pavlovian thing, only a little more brutal. And then they discovered, and it sounded like they did it all with males just for whatever reason, so that perhaps the females couldn't have been pregnant. 
And then they used those males to impregnate mice. Female mice. And those mice had babies that became extremely nervous and agitated any time. The smell of cherries came into their environment. As did their grand mice. <laughs> it went two generations worth. I wow. find it really interesting. It, 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 it explains it, the terror that exists in a lot of us when there was no event that could have produced that terror, but that terror may have existed for our predecessors. And terror and prejudice, you it may not only be by what they say or how they are, the, our parents, our grandparents, but may be inherent in how they've experienced things in their lives. And so their genetic uh, disposition, their DNA passes on those fears or worries or ways of going about life. You know, oh, oh, prejudices. I, I see it in a new way where the lifestyle you're currently living, the lifestyle we're all living here in this community, where you're looking at your life honestly without judging what you see. Like, of course, you judge your judgments, you judge things, and then you discover how to not judge yourself for judging those things. And it, you, you reach at some point this place of neutrality where with awareness, it's like taking something that's been frozen in time. It's like the sun on a block of ice. It just, it, it melts it. Anything you allow to be exactly as it is, completes it for you and also completes the things that your ancestors were carrying around. So you no longer have the whole Megillah. You have this moment and it's new and it's fresh and it's alive. I've also found, by the way, that was just beautiful. I love the, 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 the image of the sun melting the ice. That, that, was, that struck me. Um, I also find that when it evaporates for me, it also helps the people around me. What, because if I've been carrying something for a while, people pick up on it, maybe not consciously, but they're going to pick up on it. And when things evaporate for me, I think that also lightens the load for those people who are around me, because I'm not carrying a load anymore. So they're not feeling that tension that might otherwise be there. Well, you know, I really like what's happened for you guys, for you and Teresa. I remember when I first met you, who that person was, was uh, not at all like this man today. And when I say that, I don't mean it in a negative way. You came insecure in your experience of living. And I'm noticing a security in you now that comes from allowing yourself to have your insecurities so they dissolve. And then as they dissolve, you, you not just all of us, but you have a direct experience of your greatness. Because it's all fine if we're all going, oh, you're great. But, but if, if you, you don't, don't believe it, it, or you're hiding the insecurities, the insecurities are between you and the experience of your greatness. As those dissolve, here you are. Life is grand. Life is grand. And I, I just, I don't know how much time we have, but what one of the things you told me or we discussed when we first met was that this work was going to be what kept my relationship with Teresa, who's now my fiance, um, it, it's going to allow us to be together in a, a, a profound way and probably stay together. If we hadn't had this work, the the odds were we probably wouldn't stay together. I'm I'm paraphrasing grandly. A lot of license there. But in any event, the fact is that I attribute the work that I'm doing with both of you and with our community to uh, taking our relationship to a level that I could not have imagined, had never experienced before with anybody else. Okay, you didn't take your relationship to any level. And and I have to say- I, it, you, did, you had nothing to do with it. It just happened. It, it happens. You see, you're taking credit. 
as though you brought your relationship to a different level. And you also know, you're talking about it like the work you're doing. I, I've heard this great book. It's called Working on Yourself Doesn't Work. I was unaware we were doing work together. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, dear. Old habits die hard with language. That's for sure. Yeah. For okay. sure. But in fact, you and Teresa have discovered how to be together, which makes your relationship stellar. It, when you were uh, existing in the same space as somebody else and blaming them for how you felt. Or in, in, in uh, applying the judgment system you applied to yourself to them. It, yes. It's inherent in what you said about discovering your attitude toward uh, Jewish people. Jewish people. That was the attitude or the scale by which you were judging yourself. It wasn't just out there. Uh, it was also internal. So of course, as soon as we connect up with somebody, we apply that ju that judgment system grows and, and, and left, develops them. Left to our own devices, uh, more than fifty percent of the marriages in this country at least, and in divorce because people fall in love and then they work on each other to make them better and it produces divorce. Yeah, I'm clear that uh, working on Teresa or working on myself doesn't work. Uh, and what I have found is by being present and listening to her, whether I agree with, I don't have to agree with her, I don't have to disagree with her, it it uh, creates love. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. You well, know, thank you. Thanks for being with us today. We could, we could leave it at creates love. Well, I like that. That's a great place to end this segment. segment. I had so much fun. Thank you both so much. Thank you, yeah. Marty. Really, you have people... a great rest of your day too. Mm -hmm. Because it's and well, thanks. Bye bye. Bye. All righty then. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like our cat. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight. While Shai is here purring with me, uh, we get to hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted their lives. And if you'd like to learn more or register for any of our upcoming courses, uh, visit transformationmadeeasy.com. Yeah. And when I say easy, it's like the fire swamp. Yeah, join us. If you know your way through it, it's easy. <laughs> if you have a good guide, it's easy. If you don't, well, there's rodents of unusual size. <laughs> there's lightning sand. Oh, What's all those. Thing? I don't that? remember. Oh, and the fire spurts. There right? you go. There you go. <laughs> We're great Transformation guys. Transformation mm. made easy. Dot com. Hi, I'm Francisca from Germany, Hamburg. And the Canes inspired me to turn off my life from being sad and miserable to blossom to be in the moment and enjoy everything that my life shows up with do you want to have well-being with consistency connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive living made easy virtual seminars Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. You know, Shai, when uh, Marty was talking about how as things dissolve in him, uh, he feels it impacts the people around him. It reminded me that we're doing the creativity and intuition course here in a couple of weeks on the August 4th and 5th. And I, I, ha I flashed on like perfume. Have you ever gotten into elevator and stood really close to somebody who's wearing a lot of perfume and you walk out and your clothes smell like perfume? It's like if as you clean off, it gives other people the opportunity to... Uh, experience well-being right along with you so anyway that course is the fourth and the fifth that was my setup for that you're welcome to come uh susan finch and i 
are offering a one-day seminar. It's a Saturday, September 23rd. Speak up. We're going to have fun speaking up. We have uh, lots of exercises and uh, things to do together. It'll be a great opportunity to have fun have fun and express yourself with ease. And then we're doing the freedom to breathe <clears throat> and the art of being a healer at Camp Tecumseh here in New Jersey. And that's October 20th, 21st, and 22nd. It's a, a Friday night, yeah. Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, sleepaway camp for big kids. So you get to come, be out in a wilderness camp. It's beautiful, uh, comfortable, and uh, we should Lots be, of wildlife. We should be out there as the leaves are uh, turning. Also, uh, coming up, it's a while now, but we wanted to let you know, let our, our German-speaking friends know, we're doing a course, Reclaiming Your Sense of Wonder, in November, the 18th and 19th. It will be translated into German. It is virtual. And Costa Rica 2024 is open now for enrollments. Yep. If you want to know more about any or all, just go to transformationmadeeasy.com. Shall we take our next guest? Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Welcome, Teresa. Tell people where you're zooming in from. Hi, I am zooming in from New York City. Uh, Teresa is the Teresa of Marty and Teresa. Did you have fun listening to your honey? Was Weren't you proud? Yes, so proud and he's so sweet. And I was quite amazed that I'm with such an amazing man. Um, well, it's that's not an accident. You are an amazing woman who doesn't realize how amazing you are. And he has followed you into this game called living in the moment. Which makes you doubly amazing. Because I find it's uh, more challenging for men for a man to follow a woman in uh, simply because they're, it's so easy to... Think we all know it all. And, and also, I, I find that sometimes men are really, really um, tender... Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're bigger or they're gruffer or they look like they have it more together. And it's so easy to go, see, I knew this first. And then whoop, they're gone. So that's on you also. Thank you. I, I, okay. I see that. <laughs> I just, I'll own that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see or remember so many relationships in the past. So just how, how I sabotage them or I was, I was being me. I mean, I couldn't do it, done it any differently, but the the unkindness and um, that I was showing myself or the hot, the ways I was being hot on myself, I was being hot on them and how they, you know, they took their course. Teresa, here's the thing. You weren't even there in your relationships. You were lost in a story, in your thoughts about how you were doing. And you were trying to make the relationship go the way you wanted it to go. And so you were constant, constantly manipulating yourself and anybody around you to try to get it to turn out like your fairy tale, like your little girl's idea of what relationship was. I also think you, you may be doing some revisionist history because you said you sabotaged earlier ones and then you listed some things. I'm absolutely certain you sabotaged this relationship as well. We're all saboteurs. When you're upset, you do things that are unkind, judgmental, ill-advised. I can make a list. And and when you're upset, you're never upset alone. You want to bring that person to you. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's You're making it as if that Teresa had failures and you finally got it together. Every one of Teresa's failures brought her to this moment where her life is pleasurable. And I guarantee, So how do you figure? I guarantee you those things were on display. With, I mean, I'm certain some of us did things in the past that we realized, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. And you don't. But in general, our way of behaving seems to be similar, but you find somebody that it's worth dropping that for. With dropping that whole Magella, like uh, that whole 
fight in your head for because you'd rather be with him than you'd rather than be right. Yes, yes, yes. And I think I do almost compartmentalize it or that was then, this is now, and it's... Um, so, Teresa. Yes. You're, I hate to say this, but you're not listening. Okay. And how do I know that is you're thinking about what Ariel's saying and you're agreeing with it. And, but when she said it, there was this gap in time where you had to finish your thoughts about it to agree with it rather than just <laughs> allow it in. See that? And it's not bad. But if you think you're listening, when you're thinking about, you won't get into the moment because you'll be thinking about what was said as though the moment isn't it as though what was said was important, but in a moment, it's not. What's really important is this moment of your life. Yes, yes. And uh, wow, it feels different. Um, I guess I'm like, I'm still thinking, like, it's just weird. It's like a knee jerk reaction almost. I don't know. It's yes, it is. But here's the thing. If you see that and don't judge yourself for it, it completes itself. So you reach a level of neutrality in your life where you're not constantly reacting to your thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You are, uh, I, I had the a pleasure, honor, and opportunity to spend a good por portion of the day in your home. You were uh, showing me things I don't know or hadn't known uh, existed in a program called Lightroom, which is a way of organizing and editing um, Photograph. photographs. And I could see how actually that program, if I convert, oh, you know, it's kind of like you first get a program and you have to learn the program. And so it seems harder than what you're doing now that's not really working uh i can see how it's going to solve all sorts of things for me it's going to be a really good um tool, tool. the thing that i was taken with is you know your first of all your home is lovely you are lovely how meticulous you are and how how things are precision oriented and it's just just lovely but i have a feeling that you from time to time apply that meticulousness to yourself in a way that gets very self-judgmental. Yes. <laughs> a lot. So, Without, it, just, yeah. it's like, well, it's like, you know, look, I'll tell you the truth. Ready <clears throat> for a little truth. Ariel says to me, there's just so many incompletions around here. And I said, well, you were with Teresa. <laughs> and you've taken on her way of looking at your life. So Ariel wasn't just so noticing. So I wasn't just noticing. Oh, this I need to put incomplete. this away. I need to uh, fold this and put it in the closet. She wasn't thinking that. There, there, was, there was that with a judgment that it should have been done already over top of it. Kind of like the doily on your cow or the, not doily, whatever the, the, the throw. throw on your couch it's like the couch with a throw it's like it's incomplete with a throw did that make sense yeah it did make yes yeah there was a lot of that when I grew up and I I you know it's what it's the residue or I came the smell that is I think it's just there I mean I, I don't but you see my dear when you say it's a residue you still hold it in a negative uh, connotation it's still it wasn't the only way it could have been Not only that it, it, it's <clears throat> like this incredible asset you have that you can for instance we were playing with a friend of ours had uh, some pictures done with, and I said pull up the picture of Susan which is perfect because we're getting ready to do speak up and you showed, and all of the pictures, they were all so gorgeous. I don't know how you're going to find it, but you pulled up her face and you said, if you want to concentrate on eyebrows, you do this. If you want to con concentrate on skin, you do this, or on teeth, or on lips, or that the program itself. 
does it. And I, I thought, wow, you know, you can look at a photo and meticulously look at the different pieces of, oh, we have a stray piece of hair there so that it's not distracting when somebody looks at someone's image. I, I was just so impressed that you from time to time use that on yourself is not a problem. It's simply He's he's now playing with uh, uh, a rapper from a, did you leave? A, he left. Where did I drive you away? No, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I see it as simply uh, the, that you're upset. In fact, I just demonstrated it rather than including which I just did, I stopped. It was on the edge of a reprimand. You're playing with oh, that? On the edge. Okay, was it, are you playing with that? <laughs> what are you doing? Where did you go? I'd be willing to bet everything I make that you do that with Marty sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Wow. I guess I'm, I'm not aware of it, but yes. Well, awareness is a non-judgmental seeing of what is. You surely do it with yourself. But it's with you, it's not a non-judgmental seeing. It's a judgmental seeing. You think you ought to be different than you are. Yes. Yeah, I do. Well, that's your mind. And there is a being in there that doesn't need to abuse you for being the way you are. There's, there's, I sometimes feel like there's two of me or two ways of thinking. And they, and there's one time, there's moments, many moments, if not, I feel like they almost exist simultaneously. And I don't want to sound, to sound arrogant, but I think I am amazing at all the, the, the things that I do, all the things I've accomplished, all the things that I'm involved in um, at 57 years old. And, and then simultaneously, like they're almost like a sandwich or then there's, all judge like all these things on how I didn't achieve. I don't know how to explain it. Very so. yeah. <laughs> you have a mind, and your mind is not a happy place. And you're describing the mind, not Teresa's mind, but the, the mind. mind. And it's like the mind is insatiable. In other words, it cannot be satisfied. So no matter what you do, great, you produce a, a, a photo show. <clears throat> no matter how good it is, there's a picking on you that you could have done it more, better, or different. Yes, all the time. I'm just but, but, Okay, now you say all the time there's a defeat is something in there. And yeah, yeah. I'm not totally... Like, I'm, I don't than, think that's necessarily true that it's all the time. When you're fully engaged, that conversation goes dormant. It's there all the time, but I doubt that it's always picking on you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so no, it's I probably right when I'm really engaged in my because the attention isn't on me. Like for instance, uh, you know, you're retired now, but you have a few favorite clients, you work with them. And you, sh there was a list there on your, you were showing me how to organize things. And one of them is make a wish. I know that you go and when they do big fundraisers, you go and you do things for them. It's part of your, your passion, this make a wish foundation. I guarantee you when you're walking through one of their big uh, fundraisers and you're seeing the kids and you're seeing that you are not talking to yourself in a judgmental manner, you are there through the lens of your camera capturing that that moment and the yeah. apex of that moment yes I'm, I'm yes i'm happy i'm just with them or yes enjoying or want to yeah support them and be with them. yes we well, lost teresa that's right i imagine she'll be back and then we'll see what she does with it if she does come back. Uh -huh. Just gotta say though that that was fun.
Teresa, if you don't make it back, you'll be listening to this when we uh, show it and you're going to do that. It's perfect. Here oh, he is. You're back. How perfect is that? Yeah. And I, I didn't know how to, yeah, it was perfect. I guess. I don't know. It was weird. It was, it was everything we were talking about. I didn't upsetting, oh, but the upset is there that I didn't do it right. And that I messed this up. It's weird. Well, you didn't mess anything up. Well, you were done listening and we were done talking and that you went away to get to reconstitute yourself <laughs> and come back. And could you have done it any differently? No, I couldn't have. I didn't know how to hand the phone call came in. I didn't know what to press. Ah, I and didn't. I never saw that on my phone before. I mean, I put it on vibrate and I did not realize that there's a system I that that can I don't know if there is even something I can do with my phone so that the calls just don't even I never know knew that was even could happen. Yeah, it's called privacy or or focus or and uh, if you have a uh, iPhone, okay. I know you, where it is now. Yes, you get the little focus thing that it doesn't even vibrate. Okay, thank you. It's all perfect. Thank yeah. you for coming and going and coming back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so. Much. Really a treat to be with you today. Thank I, you. I'm so excited when I got to see. I had no clue you were going to be on the podcast today, so I feel like I I got treated two days in a row. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Okay. Well, if you bye. Enjoyed, oh. bye to you too. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can leave a review on your favorite podcast app. It helps other people find being here. And if you feel to do that, thanks in advance. I oh, you know what? It's funny. Marty what? was talking about this. You don't you know, know what you don't know. This next week's episode isn't that funny. I guess Marty is intuitive. I guess so. It's a good since thing. we're doing creativity and intuition. Yeah, it's coming up fourth and fifth. If you want to join us, please do. Uh, just go to our website, transformationmadeeasy.com. All right. Uh, I think it's fourth, fifth, and sixth, actually. So Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. I have the wrong number on there. See, it's good that we came back twice. Yes. All right. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And, and don't miss being here.